Hello, everyone. RBG Kim Kid here back with more Team Blade Chronicles 3. And what could possibly be the final part until we do, until the DLC heroes come out. In the previous video, we did Melia, uh, not Melia's, we did Nia's Ascension quest. And now in this part, we're going to do Melia's. But be first, before we do that, we're actually going to do the opposite of what we did. We're going to go do a couple of unique fights, and then we'll do this, the mission. And that's what we're going to do right here. Gigantus! That might be a little too easy for us. We have a side break. No mess. No mercy. Melia's, I think, probably has probably one of the broke, one of the most broken, uh, ones in terms of uh of her uh of the things you know Your fate was sealed when you rolled 
Okay. That's perfect, actually. Well, not really, now that I'm kind of looking at. Well. Yeah, maybe it was. As long as it brings back another, or maybe even ideally Melia. If it brings back Melia, that's great. Okay, that works. Not the prettiest one, but it's a decent one, I'd say. Let's bring it home! Oh, there's a side break now. Damn, why didn't I put a topple on you? Shadow Snitch. I mean, it's still gonna be pretty big damage, all things considered. What the fuck? Heal him. Damn it, we almost I hate that we almost had him. Might as well, yeah? I'll take point. I hate that we almost had him. Damn it. Alright, well let's go for another one. I'll be back with him. I'll be back with him.
Divine Blade Faltar Sold March. Okay. Actually, I think I might know where that one's at. I guess we know Ionios like the back of our hand now. I think it's like up here in this area. Oh, I just realized we actually gotten all the locations for this area in the last part when we were doing Nia's quest. Is it not over here? I thought it was. Is that it? This one's got oh, yeah, that's it right there. Shall we tango? Over here, big ugly. Air Slash with um, Air Cutter, I think that's the name of it, or some other air move, is a really good combo to have on Noah. I'm sure whoever else would be like the sword, the sword master. have enough gold coins. Another dino skill. Alright. Skyr Sherry Pentelus region. Oh, it might actually be around this area. When did it? Oh, I know there's there's one in here that we can go grab. We'll, let's go quickly grab that one, and then we'll and then we'll do the story, or the story. We'll do the side quest, the uh, ascension quest for Melia, because there is also I do want to talk about some stuff that uh happened as well that I <laughs> I'll be honest. Ever since I saw the ending of the game, I've been I've rewatched that ending maybe at least like twice a day. Mimi Momo watched in wonderment at, at attack and origin. Fluffy heart gripped with fear, feet rotted stickly to f floor with terror. Big word for everyone in caravan. Mimi Momo hope they unhurt. Um. Oh, actually, now that I think about it, I think the the enemy is like at the beginning of that area from here. Um. Maybe it's not the, that one, but I think there's another one, like, right here. I think he's a unique 
Is there a unique over on this side too? Probably not. I think the unique is only on this, uh, was in the middle and at the other side. Uh, but no, uh, yeah, I've been watching the ending and there's just a lot of things I want to talk about more. More so about the ending and like kind of how I feel in general about this game more. Uh, not going to go too in depth with it like I did at the ending. And even then I feel like I didn't even go that in depth with it, but I'm still going to let you all know like, Oh, this is how I felt about such and such and such and such and such and such, so, yeah. And there's stuff like, you know, I'm hoping for the DLC, you know, I hope the DLC, the story DLC is, you know, more so of them coming together, because I feel like that has, like, that doesn't have to be it, but I feel like that, that, like, should be it, you know? Because I know that the creator said, oh yeah, like, when, if they make a Xenoblade Chronicles 4, they're not gonna... Like, it'll be its own separate thing now. Like, Xenoblade you know, Chronicles 4 will be, like, a, a beginning of, a, like, a new trilogy type thing. You know, like how Xenoblade you know, Chronicles 1, 2, and 3 are all technically connected together. I mean, they are connected together, obviously, but it's, like... But, like, 4... And 4 might have nods, but it won't be, like, oh, it's connected to 1, 2, and 3 in this way, shape, and form, you know? It'll just be more so, like, yeah. Like, they'll probably have, like, you know, characters and such like that. So, it's, like, it's going to be its own universe, you know? So, like, these three games were one universe, and then those games would be, like, four, five, and six would be their own universe afterwards. Which I'm A-OK -okay with that, because I'm fine with, like, hey, you know, if you have a trilogy of games, they can be their own thing. And then you, once you're done with, like, the main trilogy or whatever you want to call it, then you can start the next, uh, set, you know? Yeah. Um, so that's cool. And I know Zelda Chronicles X ended on such a uh, cliffhanger as well that a lot of people are expecting and hoping for a uh, second game for that. But who knows? I mean, I feel like they would they shouldn't make a second game if they don't even plan to bring the first game onto the Switch. You know. So if they if they don't plan to even do that, then I don't say. And who knows, maybe that, maybe Game like Consoles uh, 4 will be the, uh, will be a, a sequel to X. Uh, it, it'll be a very loose sequel, you know. You're like, yeah, we don't really plan to make Game like Consoles X be playable on the Switch, but like, here's like a loose sequel that you don't really need to know about the, the basis of Game like Consoles X, but it would help to know some of the stuff, but it won't be overall kind of like similar to this in a way it's like oh yeah like hey you know about Xenoblade Chronicles 1 and 2 but just because you know about Xenoblade Chronicles 1 and 2 doesn't mean that you wouldn't enjoy this story any less if you didn't I feel like you still get a good a enjoyment of the story from Xenoblade Chronicles 3 if you did uh it, you still like the overall story of Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is still enjoyable even if you can play Xenoblade Chronicles 1 and 2. Same with like Xenoblade Chronicles 2. It's like, and granted, yeah, like, yeah, the only part of that really mattered is if the end was the ending bit. And I guess that's the same thing here in a way. And I guess, yeah, with, Mel with uh, Mio and Nel Melia as well, that kind of helps in a way. It's like, oh, wait, why is that character in Xenoblade Chronicles 1 with a and a character in Xenoblade Chronicles 2 in this thing, you know? So there's that. And uh, yes, we do have... We do have gold coins, so let's... I could either buy something from the no pond that's over here, which is what I did the first time, but I think I actually have all of the, uh... I think I have all of the, uh... Stuff. Like, I have at least one of them. How many purple ones do I have too, by the way? 92. There's so much choice. Yeah, see I have everything that the these could accomplish. 
Ha, <laughs> that's actually kind of cool is that they show you all the, like, everyone can equip them, you know? I wonder if there's, like, anything that they can't be, like, this character can't equip this. You know? Oh, but anyway, what is this? Allows revive. You know what? I might just get a second one just because. Martin. Nah, you know what? Let's actually. We're gonna go to a camp. I mean, I guess we have to go do this anyway, so. For her mission, we do this. So, but let's go to the camp here. And let's grab a gem! Let's just get a gem to, level, uh, to the highest level, because why not? We could do with some food. Now the question is, which one? Do I get one that increases the agility? Increase block rate by 12. Deals 108% or deals, a I'm sure that thing increases with it. 280% of attack damage when you take damage. Boost aggro generated when using arts. Start each battle with aggro. Extends duration timer of debuffs. Boost power and debuffs applied to enemies. Increase critical hit damage bonus by that much. Increase dexterity, increase art, increase healing. When helping an incapacitated ally, revives them with 35% more HP. Also raises healing by a lot. It's actually not bad. Um, boost speed of ally revival by 32 and raises healing. Boost power and buffs effective ish issued by self. Extends duration of buffs. Reduce aggro generated when using arts. When canceling boost damage dealt by 50, by more percents, adds 25% chance to strike twice per auto attack. Shorten auto attacks introverted and increase maximum HP. If I'm being completely honest, none of them really seem too busted to me. They're like, oh yeah, I definitely need like none of them are screaming like, oh that'd be perfect for me. If anything, it'd probably be like a healer. One, so. For this one, I just need to get some fatty support filet, so. For this one, you probably need to beat some enemies that I haven't even bothered fighting or some shit. Yeah, again, none of them are just screaming like, oh, you definitely should get this one to me. But if I would have to choose... Honestly, I'd rather go get the thing again. So what's the highest level they can get to? 94. It's almost doubled their... Let's well, move doubled. That's almost like... Yeah. Alright, let's just go quickly do that again. I'm sorry that I went back and forth to both of these areas. So I'm going to have to go back there again, but... Yeah. If I'm being honest, I'd, ma I'd rather have that accessory, even though, like, I don't think anyone even has it equipped. But I'd rather have multiple ones of those accessories. Because I, I think I mentioned this before. Ideally, in my situation, I would love to have three healers in the party at all times, you know? Uh, one of them being a hero, maybe. I Maybe. 
And now that we're able to switch our heroes things, it's not really that big of a deal if our hero is always a healer. So, um, actually, is there anything I can buy with the silver what coins? I mean, I, if I'm being honest, maybe the silver coins are much better used for other things. I'm blocking boost recharge of one art at random. That's not bad. 10% chance to keep recharge when using art. You know what? I think I'd rather have this one. Yeah. Um. But yeah, if I'm being completely honest, like, I... I, I feel like the... Much like Xenoblade Chronicles 2, the accessories in this game in this game isn't all too worth it. I don't know if that's the right word, but it's like it's like, oh, it's not that big of a deal about your accessories. Like they're not that a major point of the uh They're like they're not a major thing about like Having them on would help, you know, but it's like, oh, if you don't, you know, it's whatever. And that's how I felt you like with them in Xenoblade laugh. Chronicles 2 or 2. You think this is going to make it all better, do you? Well, I will bear full responsibility. Otherwise, well, there is no otherwise. What are you two bickering about? Your Majesty! Your Majesty! What a welcome sight to see you return! Has a problem arisen in my absence? Ah, no, no, just a trifling matter, really. Actually, we do have a bit of a problem on our hands, Your Majesty. Hey! Mind you! We have to report the facts as they are. How much longer are you going to leave this hanging, eh? What's up? <sighs> What's the problem? A couple of days ago, we had a small run-in with our Agnian opposites. Eisel took care of them, but things got out of hand a little bit. Out of hand? Nothing! They insulted Her Majesty's honor! I'm spitting feathers! But we'd no reason to fight! You were the one who earned their ire! Did they come to any harm? You hurt them? I only intended to scare them, but then they resisted. So you sought to defeat them? No! Nothing of the sort! They had no flame clocks, so I would never... The presence of a flame clock is not what instigates a battle. The glimmerings of war are always there, within us. I imagine discovering that fact must have come as quite a shock to you. <sighs> Circumstances aside, if you've incited their wrath, then I assume we haven't heard the end of this. As you say, they have since begun to rally together in opposition. I am ashamed. Truly ashamed. Now that this has come to a head, I cannot but take full responsibility. I will thwart their objective, even if it should cost me my life. You shall not. Do not speak of throwing your life away so lightly. I've already lost so many of my friends. I could not bear to lose another. Your Majesty. I told you, did I not? You are my hope. I will speak to the Agni and Chief Retainer personally about the matter. In the meantime, cool your head. <sighs> Any more unfinished business that I should know about? Couple of house calls times to cool make, your, head. your Majesty. They want you at Colony 9 and the city. Colony 9? So Zeon then? Indeed. They've asked for some urgent backup following the recent Origin attack. And the other request is from Monica. Wants you to give her people a pep talk. The descendants of Uroboros. I've caused such grief for them. And for an unfathomably long time. But now they get to speak to their real queen. I'm sure they'll be overjoyed. Yes. Perhaps. Speaking face to face with another. There's nothing quite like it. Um, Melia? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I'm going to be taking up some more of your time. <laughs> now you can cut that out. Agnes or Kevus, soldier or queen. What difference does it make? The future is to be created by each and every person in the world. I think you were the one who taught us that. 
True enough. Your unyielding spirit gives me the strength to go on. Sometimes when Melia smiles, I see sadness in her eyes, as if she's all alone in the world. Well, better start making the rounds. We've got to stop by Colony 9. Yeah, because she's thinking of her other and travel companions. Agnes Castle, right? Safe journey to you all. From atop her throne. Colony 9's backup. Friction with Agnes. The city pep talk. Ah, I probably should just start the video doing this. All right, well, let's go to... You need to be level A for them? Okay. Um... Well, like I said, let's go to, uh... Let's go to Colony 9 first. Yeah, no, I can tell that she said because unfortunately Melia is all alone in this world. She has no one from her past. Something smells exquisite. You know, unlike Nia, who has Over there. Poppy, but it's still like, you know, a, a major. I don't want to say shell shock, but it's like, where the fuck? Oh, here we are. Oof. That'll leave a bruise. Be more gentle, Commander. Don't expect miracles. I'm trying my best to heal you here. But you're a tank. Here, let me. Thank you, Miss. That would be great. What? You're. That should suffice. Can you walk? Yeah. I think so. Yeah, I think so. Queen Melia, uh, to what do we owe the honor? What good is a ruler if they cannot send aid to their people in times of need? I'm sorry to have kept you waiting, Zion. Please, let me have your report. Hey, hey, look! Isn't that the Queen? What, like the real deal? Right, back to my post. Excuse me. Right. Origin's attack unfortunately caused a landslide near Alfetto Valley entrance. We've been treating the wounded and also dispatched oh, is a that survey team what to happened? the area. Is that why the we were able to cross the thing? With the survey team. The line just went dead. There was a really loud sound earlier on. Could be more rocks. I see. Then we'll take it from here. Uni, how are you doing over there? Uni. I've healed up the worst of them. I'll wait until they're now done they just talking. Need a R &R. Oh, really? I've got to lie down? Come on. If you've got the energy to flap your trap already, you'll be back on your feet in no time. I see I had no cause to worry. How many were on the survey team? Three. One was piloting the Levness. Okay. I sent the landslide's location to your iris. You can confirm it for yourself. Got it. Uh, if you happen to see an Anita from the survey team, could you... Uh, to tell her to give back what she owes? Because I'll be waiting here until she does. I'll be sure to deliver the message. I'm so sorry to have let this come to pass, everyone. This ordeal will be over ere long. Ere long. You watch yourself too, your majesty. Don't want to see you get hurt neither. I hope you find our friend. So I said before, and I'm going to say it again. I think it would have been much better if if uh, Uni was the one that did get Melia's Ascension quest. Or not Ascension quest. Got, got her uh, class, you know? Hey, look at that. A survey branch Levness. Quickly. We must rescue them at once. 
Just because of like, I feel like they're they're interacting a little bit better. Oh God. Hello. Who's there? It's all right. We're here to help. Stay still. I'll get that heavy thing off you right this instant. I'm mad strong. Right, that's her injuries about treated. You're a survivor by nature. Good fortune that we made it in time. Oh, I can't thank you enough. I thought I was a goner. Say, you wouldn't happen to be Anita by any chance? Yeah, I'm Anita. Oh, that's great news. There was a guy in the rescue tent who was really worried about you. He said he wanted you to pay him back or something? I suspect that was merely an excuse. He seemed really rather worried. Very insistent that you make it back. Ah, oh, it's got to be Kurt. We've been in the same unit since first term. He can be a little faint-hearted at times. I'd better go and try to calm him down. Ah. So you've been joined at the hip since childhood. Joined at the... sorry? I mean that you were... inseparable. You've had a special connection throughout your lives. You understand each other's feelings and you lift each other they up. They don't even understand join at the well, I guess. What I'm to say. Hmm? Your friends are irreplaceable. Mm. Be sure to treasure them. Yep. Yes, mom. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Uh, I'll wait until we're done with the cutscene here to mention. There's someone out there special to her. But then she was imprisoned in origin for so long. So maybe they're already. Yeah. Okay, I like how this is set up in a way, too. I like how this is being set up with uh, Melia. It's somewhat similar in a way to uh, Neo. Mia. Mia. Fucking god damn it. Mia is similar in a way to Nia. But for her, this is a little more personal you know in the case because she'll be, will she'll be remembering about all of her friends and such so ah! his foot's trapped we'll need to move the rubble very carefully using arts would be far too dangerous in which case someone call for heavy lifters ah uh, yeah we'll clear this out ah uh, yeah ah uh, yeah You're in safe hands now. Y yes Thank you. Hang in there just a little longer. We don't want to overlook anything. Huh. Is he dead? Hold on. It's going to be okay. There was a second landslide. Don't mind me. Look for the others. We're well aware. But firstly... <sighs> Alright, show off. Feels warm. Do not move from this spot. We're going to check the immediate area. Uh, uh, yes. Of course. Right. I think that's the lot of them accounted for. I wouldn't relax just yet. The landslides have formed a sharp incline, in turn increasing the risk of loose rocks. I hardly need to state this, but the possibility of further landslides remains high. Getting caught in another landslide would be undesirable. We must make some distance, and quickly. Back to Colony 9. Easy peasy. As Rex says. Something easy smells exquisite. peasy. We're back. That's one quest down. Uh, ideally, or I would uh, I would assume. The Queen has returned! <gasps> Welcome back! 
We're glad to see you safe, Your Majesty! We were at the site of the landslide, but the situation remains precarious. It is vital that we remove the remaining rocks upon the slope in the coming days. You shall have the castle's aid, of course. But your own assistance in this matter would also be most appreciated. Oh, we'd be glad to help! Never want to have to go through this again! But if we hadn't, we'd never have got to meet Queen Melia. I don't regret it, because I learned today that we weren't forsaken. Forsaken? The only time we normally ever get to meet Your Majesty is at the homecoming. We've been through so many bitter times, but we've never known you to help us. Not so directly. You make a valid point. From this moment on, I will endeavor to the best of my ability to allay your fears. Ah, you're too kind, Your Majesty. Then, in the interest of allaying fears, there may be another matter I would like to discuss with you. Oh, yes. Speak up, then. I would like, from this moment on, to let the colony elect their commander, of their own volition. And I don't mean just for appointing a successor after death, or for the purposes of reform. If they make their voices known, then I think I would gladly relinquish my position as commander this second. What? What brought this on? Then... you wish to formally step down? Well... I was always the Consul's favorite plaything. I was a mere pawn, dancing to his whims, enacting his orders. But in coming to terms with our new life, I began to realize the qualities needed in a commander are very different nowadays. Please don't belittle yourself, Sion. You've worked so hard to get where you are. Believe me, I've thought about this long and hard. About who really fits the role of a commander. It must be someone we all look up to. Someone with whom we can share our path. Zeon. While I do not object to your logic, Zeon, I hope you realize that our role is in essence naught but a figurehead. What that figurehead represents, however, is something only you can decide. It's down to me. A person is not shaped solely by their birthright or innate qualities. As long as you remain critical of who you are, whether you deserve the position or not has little relevance. This crisis of conscience, you once experienced it as well, Your Majesty. Of course. Oh, yes, she Everyone did. Everyone has their battles with self-doubt. How else does one grow as a person? If you remain true to yourself, then you have nothing to fear. In this rich tapestry of life, you must find the path that you are willing to weave. I'll give it more thought, then. Very good. I look forward to hearing your answer. Melia must have had her share of hardship to talk about these things in such depth. If she's ever stuck in a rut, I wonder if we'll be able to console her in the same way. Would she even want that? Penny for your thoughts, Noah. No, it's nothing. We should get going. We've got some traveling ahead of us. Mm. That is actually very interesting. Alright, next. Let's go to the one in Agnian Castle. Diplomatic mission. Surely we can find a peaceful resolution. Oh my! Mm. It's it's Nia. Oh my God. Okay. Hi, Nia. Nia, this is a surprise. Don't worry. I know the whole story. Oh bloody hell! Oh bloody hell! <laughs> <laughs> I see you are in good company. They're kindly serving as my bodyguard. They're assisting me with a number of other matters, too. The assistance goes both ways, actually. We all won big Ah, happy bloody family. hell! <laughs> yes, that's right. Family. Aw, found family. I have a rough grasp of our present predicament. You've come to hear this side of the story, have you not? You make it sound as if these are no ordinary Agnians. 
With Queen Malia's assistance, we have been closely monitoring them on both sides. I'll get to the point. These people belong neither to Keves nor Agnes. To be precise, they were formerly Agnian soldiers, but now they claim to have lost their faith even in Agnes. This intense distrust of the future has driven them to wanton destruction. So Lovely. they stopped believing in anything, and now they just want to ruin things for everyone. That's awful. The Keves and Agnes of today are founded upon mutual trust and respect. At least that is the mood we try to foster. But the reality is that not all of us can readily accept these changes. The recent outburst was just an act of passion. But if like-minded people were to congregate... They may gain enough momentum to pose a legitimate threat, is that it? So they're the ones who have incited the latest uproar, I take it. We might have to prepare for the worst-case scenario. Minanabite! What make worst case so bad? He means there could be an attack on the Queen's life. Mama! <laughs> that was the worst case! That's one of the reasons. But we simply can't afford to leave this be. I don't believe they truly want to oppose us. Rather, they feel they are at an impasse. One cannot so easily change their way of life or how they view the world. Perhaps I ought to assert my authority as Queen after all, and... No. If you lock horns with them now, it's very possible they will shut you out completely. I would rather have you prepare to welcome them in with open arms. That's incredibly kind of you. So, where do we find these troublemakers? Oh, bloody hell! <laughs> it seems they're lying low at Hovering Reef 6. Seriously? That's right next to the castle. Presumably they approached under the guise of their fellow Agnian soldiers. The castle isn't on particularly high alert, so it makes sense that they wouldn't arouse too much suspicion. Yes, as sad as it is. I hear they're pooling their forces. You'd best be on your guard. Fear not. I am no stranger to battle. And besides, look at my entourage. You shouldn't have to get used to this. Experience can make a person stronger, it's true. But it can't take away one's pain. Oh, I know that, that all goes too for well. Queens too, you know. The moods turn dark all of a sudden. <laughs> I'm aware of that. Thank you, Nia. Take care, you guys. They both kind of have like. I mean, I to some extent, Nia is also alone in the world because everyone is gone as well from her past. I'm trying to find the fastest way over there. Right here. I mean, that stuff I'll bring up at the end of the video here when I kind of like talk about some stuff I saw at the ending and everything about it and some stuff that I feel like that, that leaves some questions, leaves some stuff open for us, so. To take the Which I did way. talk about some of the things I will talk about, but I will guess I'll get a little more... I don't really want to say in-depth, but I kind of a little more in-depth to what uh, those all were, so... Yeah, looking back, I probably should have de just definitely had... Uh, had just to uh, do this from the start, you know? But oh well. Should have just started it from here, but again... I'm fine with how we are, so... Nor should you, Lance. Oh, well, there's... and auto levs they've hauled those things out here can't catch a break can we as lady nia informed us we should expect them to be hiding in an ambush somewhere on this island 
I must remind you that we are only here to negotiate. If possible, I would like to avoid combat. Sure, but what if they're the ones to come at us first? Then suppress them at once. We could even disable their levnesses, so that they have nothing with which to fight back. Hey, I've been meaning to ask for a while now. You really know how to handle yourself in a scrap, don't you? Yes. I'm no stranger to the field of battle. Nor is this the first attempt on my life. What? Even though you're the queen? <laughs> Precisely because I am the queen. Is it really so strange for nobles to be acquainted with violence? There was even an assassin within my family once. Yeah, <gasps> your sister. I'm sorry. I hope we didn't bring back painful memories for you. Please, it's perfectly fine. Many are the things that have shaped me into who I am today. Learning to accept my weaknesses. Understanding each other's differences. Opening one's heart to others. You must have been in some real good company to learn all that. <laughs> Perhaps, yes. Back when I was young and naive, my companions taught me some invaluable lessons. Aww. And you took those lessons to heart. That's how you came to be such a magnificent queen. She's talking Though about Shulk change, and Dunban and Rhinon. Their teachings will never fade. And Sharda and Fiora. I that our last breaths should not and be those I also love the fact that she oh. talked about a uh, um Faria. Did I say it? is that her name? Tiaria or some something along those lines. So that's nice too that she mentioned. Albeit it wasn't like a big mention. It's just like, oh yeah, my sister who was an assassin kind of tried to kill me. Hello? Nobody at home? Don't move! Melia. I'll handle this. My name is Melia Antiqua. Antiqua. I wish only to speak with you. Speak with us? Rip us to shreds, more like, Queen of Kevez. You are the ringleader, are you? State your name. And why should I tell you? The world I once knew is gone. They told us defeating Kebez was the only way for us to be saved. It was the right thing to do. The just thing to do, and I believed it. <sighs> do you realize how many of my friends died in pursuit of that dream? Pursuit of that you dream? You didn't just tell them, yeah, sorry guys, you died for nothing? He's lost his cool. Maybe we should step in and deal with him. But... Melia told us she'd handle this. You ruined it! You joined forces with the Agnian Queen, and you drilled these notions into our heads! You take away our friends, then sully our reasons to live. My friends died that day, but you've killed them all over again! And that's why you've decided to destroy everything! That's right. We don't need a shitty world like this anyway. Is that all? I told you to stay where you are! Melia! Hey! What are you trying to pull? I could ask you the same thing. Why do you hesitate? You could attack me right now. <laughs> Shut up! You have no desire to destroy anything. You are simply trying to get by in a world where nothing makes sense anymore. And that's why I'm here. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Oh lordy! Oh, I'll get rid of the fucking... First. 
Queen of Roses. So that's how it is. That's how you look down at us. Sorry? I know all about you. You queens live longer than any of us could ever dream. You aren't like us, are you? That's how you can just sit on your thrones, toying with our lives like... She is like us. If you hurt her, she feels pain. She bleeds all the same. Mio. That's why she came all this way, to hear your story. She wants to know more about you. She wants to share her time with you. What? Yeah, right. Our lives are like the blink of an eye to her ilk. Just because she lives longer, it doesn't mean she's any different from you. We're all here, aren't we? We're all alive. That's enough, Mio. I see now how you feel about all this. Mate. Have you been making that speech to the Cavesi officers, too? Telling everyone that Melly is different to everyone else? You bet I did. She's so far up herself, it makes me sick. If anyone's warped, distorted here, it's you. Then what am I supposed to do? Who else am I supposed to take my rage out on? Tell me the truth, right now. The pure, unadulterated truth! That? I cannot tell you. The answer lies in you, and you alone. You must have realized by now. There is no weight to the truth of another, if you cannot judge it for yourself. <laughs> if you must have an object of hatred in order to live your life, then let it be me. But promise me that someday you'll live for the things that truly have worth, just as you and your comrades in arms once did. It's already too late. I can't go back. Not after what I've done. I highly doubt that. You are still breathing, are you not? Are you all right? I told you. I am no stranger to battle. Besides, I could not tolerate simply watching from the sidelines. Melia. Their sadness, frustration, anger. I shall never forget these feelings. Come, let us proceed to the next location. Yep. We're kind of getting a little more insight with Melia during all this stuff, which I like that. I like that. It is it is somewhat similar, but also different in terms of... Uh... Oh, wow, I just kind of realized that. Uh... Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Um... It is similar, but yet a little bit different compared to, uh... Nia's, in a way, you know? So, I mean, I like... Don't get me wrong, I actually like both of them. And how they're done, I just kind of wish they were done somewhat similar in a way. Like, I kind of wish this was also done with Mia. Nia, in a way. And I also kind of wish that Melia... Basically... Here, I'll wait. I'll wait until the cutscene. Or I'll, I'll talk about it once I'm able to pause. So, I, I kind of wanted to, in both ways, you know, both of, with Mia, with Nia, god damn it. With Nia, we went around to like four separate locations and we like, oh, this reminds me of this place from Zine Blade Chronicles 2 and such. This reminds me of this and this and this from my world and all that stuff. I wish we had that from Melia as well. And then we go to a campsite and we talk about that, and then it's like, all right, let's go back to the castle and such. And then they both have, like, these mini side quests right here within themselves, you know, for their overall Ascension quest. And I think that would have worked out great. Instead of only having, instead of, instead of Nia's being her memories, having her theme level up to 10, then do the Ascension, and then just go to that one location, you're done. And this one, you know, just being, you need to get her to level 10, then you start the Ascension quest, which... Has you do with the mission? Majesty, and such. sorry to bother you. I'm sure you're rushed enough as it is. I'm here to discuss the speech you mentioned. Did I come at a bad time? 
No, not at all. We've been stretching our necks every day, waiting to see if you'd turn up. I too have been anxious to meet you. I'm sorry to have been a source of anguish for you this long. It's all been for today. I don't consider any of it a waste. Now, on to the matter at hand, rallying the troops. With the final battle with Mobius looming before us, we're doing our best to prepare. With the final battle, Mobius already happening, but then like a weird time thing happened, and then it's but like, we oh shit. More than just supplies. A battle to determine the fate of the world is hardly a light topic. Everyone's beside themselves with worry. Some poor souls have completely snapped. We're never going to last an actual combat at this rate. I don't blame them. No matter how noble our cause, the fighting will cost us lives. We're caught between the future we desire and the present, which is ours to lose. It's a place beset on all sides by fear. You got that right. Especially when there's no guarantee you're going to be coming home. Even a brief address would do. Just as long as you speak to them somehow. I understand. I don't know if I'll be able to get through to them, but I will try. We'll be your guides while in the city. Make sure you don't lose your bearings. That would be most appreciated. While we're here, would it bother you if I took a look around the city itself? Please, be my guest. I think we'd all like that. Maybe we could take her to Centrillo Parade. There's plenty of people around there. No objections from me, but there are some rather, shall we say, ardent followers of the Queen up that way. If they get too insistent, you might need to give them a friendly nudge. Oh yeah? All right, we'll keep a lookout. All righty. Well, the side quest gives me the little bit of boost that I need to get to the last development level of this. That'll be great. Yeah, it, it, I mean, maybe there is a way, but like, maybe if you do sell your stuff, it's it's a little harder to get the development levels for this game compared to Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Xenoblade Chronicles 2, you can kind of just um farm it out in a way. It's like once you get gold cylinders, you get gold cylinders, then use them in... Uh, that more more ordain, you know, use them there, and then you get all this stuff, and then you could just sell stuff and keep buying stuff and so on and so forth, and you're, you'll just get your development level up like that in everywhere. So this one might be a little more trickier because I don't think I don't know if you get stuff by selling, and I think you only get it by buying the one times. Like, oh, you buy it once, and then you'll never get it again, even if you buy from them again. Now this is a far cry from the colonies and the castles. Here is a place where people can truly live, make a home. I couldn't believe my eyes when I first saw this place. All these different people I'd never seen before. Things of all shapes and sizes. I wish I had been there to see your reaction. A shame. To see my mouth hanging open like a lummox. Not worth it. You seem to take it all in your stride. None of this surprises you. It's more that I'm assailed by old memories. Technologies of old are put into practice here. I feel the industry of those times. Huh? Is that really you? Queen Melia? Queen Melia? Uh, yes. I do go by that name. I knew it! I knew it from the moment I laid eyes on you. You were something special. <sighs> Finally caught up. Hey, old man, you're gonna give yourself a heart attack. Well, thanks for your concern, but I'll decide when and how I'm going to pop my clogs. Pop my clogs. I've lived my whole life for this day. Heck, you all have, haven't you? Of course we have. You've returned to us at last, my queen. You really are as radiant as they say. Hey, fancy a bite? You should come by my restaurant, sample a few of the local dishes. <laughs> Nobody wants to see your seedy little bistro. She wants something memorable. Oh, 
Say that again, I dare you. <laughs> if you hate my establishment so much, I'll be more than happy to bar you from it permanently. Permanently. All right, people. Don't shove. And stop arguing. You don't want to scare the Queen now. Oh! My! Dave! God. Oh, Dave. Eh? Come on now, this is getting excessive. I agree. Oh, leave him. Everyone's been living for this moment. It's always been my dream to see the true Queen come back to us. A lot of us die before we get the chance. Yeah. But now it's actually happening. Before our very eyes. How can we possibly keep calm when a miracle is unfolding? I am so grateful to you all, my people. I would like to express a few words of gratitude, if I may. It is a joy to see real human activity once again. After all these years, I see that you continue to remain strong. Of course we do. Got to protect what we love, right? That's right. I'm not resting these old bones so long as there's life in them. We'll hold out for decades more if we have to. We have our queen. And even Ouroboros stand by her side. With their strength behind us, Mobius won't stand a chance. Looks like that takes care of that. Indeed. Wow. Decades plural. And here we are, happy Decades enough if we can plural. reach one. The way I see it, you lot are far more incredible. You've achieved so much in so little time. Huh? That's only natural, ain't it? Gotta get stuff done in the time you have. No way I could imagine having to fight for 40 or 50 years. Feel so snuffing far away. Uni. By the by, I'm not seeing the story spinner anywhere. Story spinner? Story spinner? He's this old guy who knows more about the city's history than anyone. Oh, He's okay. He's like a walking encyclopedia. I thought they were talking about, like... One for, like Real Riki curious, or someone Blake. like that who like told Normally, the stories of them like afterwards, this. you know, maybe Dunban. <laughs> well, no I feel like that's though. more of a Dunban thing to do. Ricky, not so much. Majesty, he might drop dead from the shock. Heavens, where might we find this person? I think we should pay him a visit. What really? I'll bet it'd make his day. But are you sure? I would like to try to meet him. God damn it! If at all possible. I forget hate wish. that. It's your, call. it's your call. You'll probably find him at Mitya Lookout. I Mitya hear it's one lookout. of his favorite spots. A walking encyclopedia, is he? Then we can expect an enlightening conversation. What com conversation are you expecting? I do like this. Again, I like this a lot. Okay. Oh, what's all the oh, fuss? Okay. Whose funeral is it this time? Helb? Nobody's, I should hope. We were just wondering if... Oh, old Melly. Old oh, Melly? This, this can't be real, so somebody pinch me. What if it's actually my funeral? Then that would mean... Where, where the places have I ended up? Yeah, uh, this is Mitya Lookout in the city. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to startle you. I'm told you have quite the wisdom. I was hoping to ask you a few things, if it doesn't bother you. Oh, Melly! Oh, I get ya. The Queen herself is asking me personally to tell her a story. <laughs> now I know I'm dreaming. Hey, or a Boris kids, give me a good wallop here. Right on the kisser. <laughs> sure thing. Lance. Have you gone quite mad? <laughs> Lance. <laughs> I didn't throw my weight into it. Let's all calm down for a second and just talk sensibly, please. Oh, I see. A rousing speech for the city, eh? What struck the luck? 
Even after that battering, I know I'll be content in the afterlife. Oh, don't start. You were the one who asked us to. Well, it seems life's worth living a little while longer. <laughs> don't want to disappoint old Queenie now, do I? Go on, then. Ask away. It's been tough fights for decades. What do you know of Melia? I've been wondering. I mean, when you first be able to saw ask Melia, still. I kind of got the impression you knew more about her than you let on. Of course I do. Have you seen the stacks of literature they've got here in the city? Packed to the rafters. And there's passages on the true queen, too. And you betcha these eyes have read them all back to front 20 times over. So you know all about her? <laughs> naturally, naturally. <laughs> Here, I'll give you an example. It is a lesson on fact that Her Majesty is squeamish around shiny bugs. What? <laughs> How could you possibly know that? There was also a little morsel about how she found rainbow bugs particularly revolting. Oh, I remember that. I think now, but uh, I reckon the beast is about the size of your fist, whose bodily excretions make them glow and... I remember right, that. enough. You don't need to go into such detail. The mere memory gives me goosebumps. <laughs> don't you worry. I've got plenty more tidbits like that up my sleeve. We don't want to hear it. Look, I will tell you what I want to know. Oh, yeah, well, I'm all ears. When you get to the age you are, after living for so many decades, you must have had to say goodbye to so many of your friends and stuff. Must be a lot of crap to deal with. So, uh, how do you cope? <laughs> the pits is what it is. There are times when I wonder why I don't just curl up and die. But see, life ain't all sunshine and roses. <laughs> I think that's part and parcel of it. So what? You just have to go on living in misery? You've got to be joking. Ginny, are you all right? I just want to know what it's all about. Growing old. There's folk out there who get to live so much longer than us, and they still choose to fight. It just feels like I'm always taking a back seat. Like I'm getting left behind. But I want to be there with you guys. Even if it's just in spirit. Uni, I had no idea that was how you felt. Aww. Yeah, sorry. Hard to put it into words, really. Even if those you once loved are no longer a part of this world, lonely as it is, and painful though the memories be, it is not wholly a tragic tale. For you can keep close to your heart your memories of those dear to you. And that is something to take pride in. That is what will give you strength. Admittedly, my life took a very different path to the likes of my companions here. But such are my thoughts. Ah, never a true word was spoken. That's one for the ages. Where's my notepad? The fact that you're worrying about us here and now, Uni, I don't think we'll ever forget that. Your feelings will transcend time. I'd have to agree. So don't feel like you need to be doing anything special for us, Uni. It's reassuring enough just being the way you are. <laughs> don't suppose you've got any tissues on you. Spark, why'd you have to go and make it all soppy? <laughs> Nobody is leaving you behind, Uni. If you ever feel distance between you, you need only speak out. Wait, was this all just to tell me that? That's about the size of it. <laughs> Good luck out there, young'uns. Don't just pass it off as your own speech. Uh, say, Melly, uh, would you mind if we shook hands? He's straight up ignoring me! He's straight up ignoring me! I don't see why not. Oh, you angel. Now I can shuffle off this mortal coil without regrets. 
knowledgeable my ass. Life's a cruel journey from one end to the other. You only get one chance to walk it. But if there's one thing that gives it all meaning, it's love. That's very sweet. That ain't something I have to teach you young folks, though. Your friends are lucky fellows. Monica said something like that, too. Still doesn't make much sense to me, though. <laughs> well, love takes many forms. There are as many ways to show it as there are people. I'll remember that. Thanks. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but we should probably be getting on. Till we meet again, story spinner. Indeed, indeed. Safe indeed, indeed. travels to you, Your Majesty. Oh, that was it? No, 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 we don't even gotta give the pep top. Talking to the various people of the city, Melia helped calm their fears. I think we've done the come. rounds here. Let's head back to the castle. Didn't even get anything for that. Alright. That was still pretty nice. I like that. I did like that. <laughs> nah. Let's do it again. Your Majesty. You've returned. I trust it's been quiet in my absence. Yes. I see that you have calmed down. Yes, I have realized. However fervent my loyalty, if I am ever the source of a highness's anguish, it does no good. You think too deeply, Isel. Tis your mind's fiction. Ah, I will rectify that. I will rectify that. <laughs> I love Melia. I am sure you will. How was your trip? And what of the world? It's fucked, man! Mankind's follies. People never learn. Whatever the passage of fate may bring, we must never lose the spirit of defiance. Lest we spirit submit of to defiance. As we once did. Nah. Again. Why does she look so sad? My friends and I, we... we fought hard for all this. We staked our lives on this future. And if there's a chance to keep it that way... I too will be happy. I'm 100% certain this song is this like a world. remix from Xenoblade Chronicles 1. Snuff that for a laugh. I hate that. You're the important one here. Pardon? It's true. It's something I noticed before. As befits a queen, you're always thinking about your subjects. But who thinks about what's best for you? Seeing you suffer alone like this, none of us like it. It's too sad to think about. Losing you, that is. You're one of us. Yeah, think about how much you always think of us. It's only fair if you let us do the same for you. Speechless. Aww. Melia, you are needed in this world. But you weren't born solely for the world's sake. That may be so. However, I... If you permit me, I'll gladly lend you my strength. Not because you are our queen. Because you're our friend. Because we're travelers. In the here and now. So we should live. Together. Mmm. Oh I'm no. Glad you're with us, Melia. Oh fuck you, game. Fuck I'm you, game. You is the best. Oh, oh. Yes. You are right. It even showed How the funny. future connected the kids. The wisdom is said to come with age. Still, you all seem to teach me so much. If some things elude my grasp, your words show me that there is more. 
more to life. Oh. They guide me when I run astray. Again. And again. How fortunate I am. To have you. <laughs> now that's more like it, girl. Girl. Melia. Thank you. Thank you for always having believed in us. That's one thing I would never doubt. Now we embark on our quests to create the future. Yes, it's ours. To live in a world without gods. What? What? I don't know where that came from. That was wonderful. I fucking love that. With the city's hearts and minds put at ease, Colony 9 haven't received support, and Agni and Opposition Quell Melee officially joined the party. We're going up in the world. Damn, there we go. We're maxed. I really like this. It's looking this complete. game was... this. Well, the game in general, but like, the missions were fucking phenomenal. I love them. I love them so much, so... Alrighty, that takes care of that. If there's any other side quests or anything afterwards, I will look for them on my own, and then we'll do that when the DLC comes out. So, yeah, guys, that's it for the game for now. We do we will have some DLC, like I said. Um, how that is going to be set up, I don't know. I know it's coming out on the 13th of October here. I should write this all down. And. Um, so obviously that's not going to be the next part because this is like what coming out October like 7th or 8th or something like that So what's happening now? So as you guys know, I am playing some demos uh, with the, in the other video the hmm. demos are what's coming out the second half of the day um, If I if everything goes according to plan and every single demo I'm I'm planned to do if I end up splitting those into two parts each that will lead up to the release of of the DLC and then we'll cover that uh, so there's that and then what I'm going to do between for the first half I have no idea maybe I go and smash maybe I start a new let's play until uh, one of the games that are coming out later this month is available I the earliest one is a plague's tale requiem which comes out on the 18th I think it is um, yeah I think it's the 18th so when it comes out then I will probably you know, we'll see. Again, or I could start just a new Let's Play because then, yeah, I don't know. Maybe qu maybe start a quick, uh, short style Let's Play. We'll see. I don't know. There's a lot of stuff to think about. And there's also Digimon. I did say at the end of Soul Hackers 2, I might go back into Digimon. Um, just to, like, show off the end, the other endings. We'll see. There, It's quite a long ways to go in order for me to do that, but we'll see. Um, and I mentioned that in the update as well as like I could Every do this for Digimon as well. So we'll see. Um, so there's that. So before I wrap up, guys, uh, there are a couple things I want to talk about here. So I'm going to be talking about the ending again and a couple of things. So one of the things that so as I watch the ending, I also watch other people's reactions and their thoughts about it and everything about that. And it's like, OK, that kind of makes sense. So I kind of like want to shed, shed lights on you guys, too. So Noah throwing his sword was kind of like a sign that there was no more reason to fight and the world was resetting anyway so who knows about that and again I'm still mad that we don't know what the name of the sword is like what he was going to call the sword or whatever because I feel like that was kind of like a big thing you know that should have been a thing he should have said like oh yeah this was the name of the sword because I feel like oh that's a cute thing for Melia I feel I feel like that's something that they wouldn't mention if it wasn't important. Same along with the name of Mio's and Noah's kid, you know? It's like, like, oh, how about this for a name? And then they don't say it. It's like, oh, that's going to be a reveal later on. And I mentioned that before. Same with the sword. So there's that. Something I didn't notice was, like, when Senna and Lance fist bump, you saw Senna, like, lower her head and kind of, like, shake a little bit. You could tell that she was crying. So that was sad. And... Uh, Uni, Uni's favorite number is four. That's why she put tie on at number four. It's because she collects 
Fortune Clovers. That's right. They don't spell fortune like how you normally spell it. They spell fortune with four. F-O-U-R in huh? it. So that's really hey, nice. Did you guys hear something? After Neo, Mio and uh, Noah kiss. And you saw like the little no, bling no, thing from their know. hand. That was the world separating. The world was ha separating them. That wasn't them letting go. That was a nice... That was, oh, that hurts my heart so much. I tear up. I still tear up thinking about the fucking ending and watching the ending too, by the way. Tyon falling on his knees. It's very quick. It happens and then they, ch like, he falls to his knees and then he changes. Like, it goes, it changes to a closer up on Neo. So it's very quick like that. So, that's right. N and Noah doing the one thing that N couldn't do, and that was let Neo go for the sake of the world. Like, they had the power, like they could have, if they wanted to keep the Endless now and be together, they could have, but they didn't want to do that. They decide, like that's that was their decision at the end, you know, where Melia was like, you could, you could still keep it as the Endless now if you wanted to. And they're like, no, we're not doing that. So, and that was something that N had to do. Even And they just wanted to stay together just a little bit longer as they could. And another thing that I know, and I noticed this too at the end, was Noah still had Mio's flute. That was uh, Neo's. That was Mio's flute that Noah had that you kind of saw when they panned behind him as he was given his final dialogue there. It, I don't know. Fixed that could be a thing, but with the world resetting anyway, who knows? I think that's still nice that he still had. Um, um, hmm. He still had uh, Mio's flute. So that was fine, and it's weird because there's like even they said like items from their, from like the items from, uh, their world couldn't, like items from, uh, Xenoblade Chronicles Two world couldn't be in Xenoblade Chronicles One's world and vice versa. But it was still there unless you know it takes like a slow dissolvation or whatever. So that was nice. I, again, because it was kind of quick and because I was like freaking out about the picture that M Nia had, you know, of all the Xenoblade Chronicles 2 group. You could see uh, Azurda. Azurda was in the back. Huh? You could barely see it. You had to w hey, you, you, you had to see it before they did, like, the closer up about it, so. Every day's a training but Azurda day. was there as well. I... Uh, if, if you listen to the song, if you're listening to the song, if you heard the song uh, after, like, if you were just listening to the song, not watching it in the cutscene, when you see them running, trying to catch up to each other again, the, the, there's a piano that kind of like intensifies, and I, I think that's significant. That um, signifies like them like trying to like just see see each other for as long as they can, you know, just to like keep seeing each other and try to touch each other again. Which I think that's oh, that's so well done. That's why the music is so good in that game in this game. Um. <laughs> Tyon and Lance never high fived. They never had their high five, so that's the reason why they definitely need to have the DLC be in the future so they can do their high five. That's unfortunate. Mio, that we heard at the end the, of the scene at the cutscene when it went back to them being kids, that was like, that was either the Kavesi um, sign off or it was like the Unison send off. But that was what, what Mio was playing and. That was really nice. Riku's nod to Melia when we rescued her. What was that about? We never. Got, I I was like, okay, I, I wasn't gonna mention that until we did Melia's quest, just to see like maybe they'll mention it. It's like, nope. And even then, they kind of like had a little nod here too at the end. I'm like, what the fuck? So it's like, does Riku know Melia and vice versa? Like, what the fuck? So that's something else. Uh, I already talked about the sword. I talked about the child. Some issues as well that I have with this game. And if I do, I, I might do a review of this game. I don't know. If I do, it'll be on the other channel. I mentioned that on my update video that released as well on the channel. That I might do a review of this. Auto balancing. And this, this is an issue that they've had with all three Xenoblade Chronicles games. I, ca I can't remember so much about Xenoblade Chronicles 1. But I know they had this issue in Xenoblade Chronicles 2 Every and Obsidian 3 because I mentioned day. before. Is balancing with the audio. I feel like, especially in the cutscenes, the music just overpowers the voice so much. And you don't want to have it too low because then, and then because the volume adjusts to the combat uh, 
dialogue as well, not just for, you know, um, huh? cutscenes. So hey, it's very hard to, like, find a good medium between them, you know? I, I hope that there's a way that they could, like, okay, uh, music during cutscenes. Do you want the music to be a little bit lower at cutscenes? And, uh, uh, audio, uh, dialogue during cutscenes. Have that all the way high. Have the music just a little bit lower. Uh, battle music, have that be a little bit higher. Have the battle dialogue a little lower. Not that I mind the battle dialogue, but there was a lot of that. Um, I kind of wish that we saw... We never saw, uh, how Tyon joined up with, uh, Mio and Senna. We never, like, saw that. With, with Lance, Noah, and Uni, they were together from the get-go. Like, that, and that's the thing that we had. It was like, oh, yep, they were together from the get-go. But we never saw that with Senna, Un uh, Senna, Mio, and Tyon. We know that uh, Senna and Mio were in the same colony, and then once uh, Colony Omega fell, and then when Tyon, like, I, I think he requested a transfer from uh, Lambda, and they all went to Gamma. But then we never saw them meeting and becoming the team, you know? that It's not a big deal, but I actually would have liked to have seen that, even, like, in a flashback cutscene, you know? Kind of, and that's how, because that's how we saw Mio and uh, Senna get together with a flashback cutscene. Villains, I feel like, were definitely weak in this game compared to Xenoblade Chronicles 1 and 2. Uh, I think I think Xenoblade Chronicles 2 still had probably the best villain because he was... Uh, here's the thing. The villains in this game were there, but I feel like there were so many of them, you know? Zed being the overall villain, and I think he was, like, kind of a weak one, too. Like, if anything, I X and Y I were stronger in than Z because we never saw Z until we had to fight him which I feel like was also kind of like an issue with uh, Sansa in a way at the end of the end of the Chronicles 1 which grand you did kind of see him like every now and then like you, when you went to Prison Island the first hand and like released the power of the Monado or whatever stuff like that so like you did see him but he wasn't like a threat you know like he we didn't know that he was a threat fix this. until much dark. later I don't know. It's it's something that they feel like they definitely could have worked nice on. D, uh, console D, and like the, to some extent J in a way, and when they were their combined Mobius form, D remind me a lot of Metal Face in a way, and uh, Munkar, who was Metal Face. He reminded me of him so much, uh, which was great because Metal Face was probably the best villain in Blade Chronicles one, um, and I, I and I think that's why. D was a really good villain here too, Console D. Especially because he kept like not really antagonizing, but like you know being um, you know being, well being antagonistic to Uni and the gain of such. And of course it helped when they when he had um, when he had Yorn with him too. So it kind of helped with that as well, in terms of like oh yeah like this is uh, like this is like what it is and such. So so that was pretty interesting, and I like that. So, yeah, and like I said, all the other villains were like, mm. and of course, N and M, like N and M were really good, too. I wouldn't even consider M a villain, but like N was definitely a good villain. You know, he, he kind of filled, so, he kind of like filled the role of D in a way after we dealt with D. Granted, we like had the whole N breakdown before we even fought D again. But like once we destroyed D and J, Every day's a training day. I feel like. Uh, and kind of took that role in a way but again like I said graphics graphics I, I think are still fine but I definitely feel like it could have been they def it's it's kind of like limitations of the switch nothing wrong with the switch at all don't get me wrong with that but like it's just kind of like the limitations that they have to deal with which again it's nothing too major about it hmm. it still looks beautiful by the way it's fantastic uh, what was it like was that for Izzard's um, commander Izzard's uh, uh, Ascension quest or whatever that we were doing and we we teleported like right in front of his command office and the the, the building Didn't load up right away. It's like what the fuck. I think that's really the only issue I've ever had with the game like that I think everything else was fine In terms of like visualize. I mean, it's still a beautiful looking game. Don't get me wrong. It's still fucking beautiful. I freaking loved, I think probably one of my favorite scenes is the flute exchange between Noah and Mio. That was fucking amazing. And we have that scene, and then we go to the Ethel and Kamarave fight. 
it's beautiful picture perfect in my eyes it was like how that se is set up that way i think that's perfect a step away the the song that plays when you're in the prison before uh mio's homecoming i think that was perfect and i think it's probably it's my favorite song if i'm being completely honest i freaking love the where we belong which is the name of the the last song uh they're all they're both really fucking good uh but like just the way that how and this goes for both of them just the way that the music and the song and the lyrics are fitting perfect for this scene and the situation is wonderful but i feel like it really hit home at least for me anyway with the that scene in the prison with a step away because it's Every about like you know noah day. and mio being like they're literally like a step away but they can't be there together and all that stuff and they're like you know they're all all that stuff it's so fucking good it's really great um and yeah like i said before the ending song really did put everything in perspective if you're listening to again it's like um they're like i thought this moment would last forever but you know it couldn't and uh this ending is not goodbye and all that stuff and right right there too and of course at the end when they're like one day i'll see you again i promise and all that stuff they're like so they're basically saying like we really will see each other again one day you know so that's why i feel like it's really um um, it's really fantastic. And that's all I have to say. That's basically everything that I thought about from me watching the ending uh, of Xenoblade Chronicles 3 and watching the ending, watching other people react to the ending, reading comments of everyone's reactions to their endings, just to like know and give like a little bit of like, oh, okay, that's a little bit of an insight with about, you know, the Fortune Clover thing, um, Uni's favorite number being four, which... I don't know, that might just be a speculation, but I feel like that's that fits because of the fortune clovers and all that stuff. And I think it really does fit. And people have been starting to get their Xenoblade Chronicles 3 collector's editions with come which comes with an art book, so that's pretty cool. So I hope we will be able to like see scans and such like that fairly soon. Um by the time. So yeah. This game's fantastic. I love this game. Um I think I said this with update video. I think it's probably my favorite game now. Like, Persona 5 was definitely, like, a, my favorite game. And then Royal happened, and, it's, like, it just boosted up. It's, like, it's just the way Xenoblade Chronicles 3 just hit so many of my... So many of those high notes was just something else. And I loved it from start to finish. The combat being a mix of Xenoblade Chronicles 1 and 2 was perfect. And everything else that I kind of talked about at the end of the main story stuff was just wonderful and picture perfect in my opinion and it was just great so I, I i love it and i'm gonna i'm always gonna keep loving this game this game's fantastic but we're not done with it yet i mean there's dlc to come out um there'll be a hero dlc coming out with the uh coliseum battles or whatever they're called we'll be checking out her you know whatever her hero for her, her first hero quest is and then maybe we'll check out some of those challenge battles and then uh, we'll do, uh, we'll get whoever her inheritor is, which might end up being Noah. Who knows? I don't know how many heroes they have left. Like, if we want to, if we want to judge it solely on this, if we want to judge it solely on this, that they're, they they want to have just one whole page of this full, there's three heroes left. Like, if we want to judge it solely on that, there's three. And not to mention the fact that there's only four volumes, unless they decide to do another expansion pack, which. Who knows? I don't know how, what that would do. If I'm being honest, like the how much was the expansion pack? I think the expansion pack alone was thirty bucks and such. So I don't know. Maybe it's one of those things. Like if they do decide, because I think that's what they did with Smash. Like I don't think they plan to have a second expansion pack. But then people were like, "We want a second expansion pack." They're like, "All right, we're going out to second expansion pack." They might do that as well here. Like maybe, maybe their idea for the fourth story was, you know, a prologue about the six, and maybe a little more about how Riku and such does that. But now people are like, no, we want the DLC to be about Noah and them getting back together and getting the world to, you know, be together in one big happy ending. We want Xenoblade Chronicles one and two and three characters all mingling together. You know. Who knows? And again, maybe that maybe in the challenges, that could be a thing too. Who knows? I don't know. We'll see. 
maybe what they do for the challenge uh, battles is somewhat similar like they did in Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Is like Shulk and Rex and people like that might show up in the challenge arena for that. And they're like, oh yeah, you can have them as your heroes, but you can't have them as your heroes anywhere else uh, in the game. You can only have them here unless you buy a certain item and such afterwards. So who knows? We'll see if they do something similar to that, like they did in Xenoblade Chronicles 2, where uh, Shulk and Fiora were blades, but you can't take them outside until you've like, until you do like certain things. So I digress. I love this game. Uh, I think this game is wonderful. Um, what more can I say that I haven't already said about it? Besides, thank you, thank you to Monolith Soft, thank you to Nintendo for this game. It's a fantastic game, and I loved it. I honestly would love to check out the old games, like the Xeno, the Xeno, uh, Xeno uh, Saga, the Xeno Cross, Xeno Saga, Xeno Gears, you know, all those games. I would love to check out those games if I could, but with the hardware that they're on and everything else, that probably may not happen unless there's, like, ways to, like, emulate them, which there might be, huh? but even then, it's, like, something. Hey, will I cover it as a series? Something. Who knows? We'll see. Probably not, because I don't really have a good PC or anything like that, but... But anyway, guys, that's going to do it for Xenoblade Chronicles 3, guys. I hope you enjoyed this series from start to finish. And even though we're technically not done with it yet, um, because we'll have DLC, like I said, in October. Then the first here, then I can definitely see the next expansion coming out, like, maybe mid uh, next year. Maybe at the earliest April. Uh, if we go by, like, okay, let's, let's go by release. So this game came out in July, at the end of July. So we had August, September, and a little bit of October there. So that's like a three-month period. So then we have November, December, January. If we're going by that, maybe by highly doubt that. Because who knows when they want it. Let them take their time. I'm totally fine with it. But I'm definitely looking forward to all the heroes that um, come out afterwards and such. And we're looking forward, I'm looking forward to the first one that comes out in a few days. So that's great. But yeah, guys, thank you all so much for watching this video. Guys, if you liked the video, please give a like button a click. And comment down below if you like about the video, didn't like about the video. And let me know, guys, what did you think of Melia's Ascension Quest? I thought it was really good. Again, I kind of wish they did they did a mixture of both what we, they did for Nia and Melia. Where, you know, for I get I wish there was like we had to like go around places first for Melia before we even got the quest instead of just like, okay, you have her quest, get Noah to level 10, and then it's her ascension quest. With Nia. It was kind of the same way in a way, but it's like you had like you could still like go check out those areas first. You didn't have to be, you didn't have to have done her ascension quest or get someone to be. You didn't have to be inside the ascension quest. You didn't have someone to have to be at like, rank ten with her, um, with her uh, class. You know, you didn't have to have someone like that first. So either way, I feel like. I feel like there could have been a nice mix between them, you know? I'm actually quite curious. How much Nopon per purple coins is... It costs 84 to go from 1 to 20. Damn. Actually, did I already check that already? I honestly don't remember. But yeah, I wish they did that in a way. But yeah, still, let me know. And as always, guys, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a beat. And subscribe to my main channel, too. That's in the description below. As well as follow me on Twitter. Both my main Twitter, the RPG, Kim Kid Twitter, are in there, too. Thank you all so much for watching once again. And I'll see you all... Next time.